Well, hey there, gang. Crash here from the CrashCast podcast. You can check out the weekly show on the RC Hobby at thecrashcast.com. For those of you that uh, follow the show regularly, you already know this information, but if you're just happening to come across this video in YouTube, let's give you a little background. Um, we are entering our fifth year as uh, the premier builder's podcast on the radio control hobby. And uh, I personally have, uh, let's see, this year, 31 years RC flying experience. Now, I love to do scratch building, so once a year, we try to take on a project to challenge you guys and to, to help you guys along with maybe your first kit build or your first scratch built project. And uh, last year, we actually did a kit from... Uh, what was it? We did it from RadicalRC.com. We did a mini intern, and before that, we've done a, uh, a tricopter. We've done a, an airplane, a small 32-inch wingspan uh, electric RC airplane. Well, this year we're we're back to scratch building, and we're going to build a Regalo wing, which is what we've got right here. Very simple little airplane, easy to build. The goal of this whole thing is to get you building. There are so many people in the RC hobby now that, uh, that they don't do much building. What they do is assembling. You know, there are a lot of fine and high quality ARF projects out there. ARF meaning almost ready to fly. But they didn't have that stuff when I was younger. Uh, when I first got into the hobby at, what, 13, 14 years old, they didn't have ARFs. And then when the ARFs finally did come onto the scene, they were pretty much junk. Um, you could fly it, and some of them flew very well, but if you crashed it, you put it in the dumpster. You were done with it. It was very hard to repair those types of airplanes. Nowadays, you get better things, uh, better quality, uh, better products. Uh, nonetheless, though, there is nothing like the satisfaction of constructing an airplane yourself, something that looks good, flies well, and, and meets the intended goal that you were trying to hit. And, uh, you know, so that's what we try to try to share with you, that, that satisfaction of a job well done and learning to craft things together with your own two hands and minimal cost and minimal tools. That's my way of doing things. This year's project, as you see here beside me, this is going to be our QSC Regalo. Now, QSC is something that I coined a long time ago, and you'll see a lot of my projects, the QSC Electric Airplane, the QSC Tricopter, the QSC Quadcopter. Well, QSC stands simply for quick, simple, and cheap. Q for quick, meaning it's going to be a very quick build. Simple, meaning uh, simple construction methods. And then finally, that C for cheap. I like to do things on the cheap. There's some fantastic RC projects you can get into out there that can cost hundreds and thousands of dollars, you know, depending on how much you want to, how, how bad you want to get into it. Uh, but I've had more fun in the last five or six years just doing inexpensive projects and just having a ball with them. This is going to be our QSC Regalo. Uh, this is a Regalo style aircraft, Regalo wing, and basically it's, for lack of a better word, uh, in layman's terms, this is a kite plane. So it flies like a kite. Um, this particular model is based on uh, a few designs that I was able to find on the internet. Um, not a whole lot of information out there for a Regalo wing. Now, I do want to give some credit here. I've not purchased a kit, but I've had friends uh, in other states that have purchased the Jamalo, uh, and that is a gym sized Regalo electric aircraft, and they're made by a gent named Bob. And if you want to, maybe you don't want to take on the Scratch Build Club uh, uh, project here. You're not up for the challenge, or maybe you don't have the time, although this one's not going to take a long time to build. Uh, maybe you just want to buy a kit and get it built and get it in the air. And if you want to do that, I'm going to send you over to blac.net. And that stands for Bob's Little Airplane Company. Uh, and he sells a fantastic version of these things, um, of which mine is fairly heavily based off of. I've used a lot of the design elements that, uh, that Bob used, and wow, his, his kits are pretty inexpensive. Nonetheless, we can come in cheaper than what it would cost to buy one of his kits if we decide to take on this task ourselves. There is only one, I would say one maybe a little challenging thing to do with this aircraft in the build process, and that's uh, attaching the sail 
But again, it's not that big of a deal. I'm going to lay out the instructions and I'm going to show you how to do this yourself. Um, this particular aircraft, mine here, this weighs uh, about 14 ounces. I've got a 370 to 400 size electric motor for it. And we're running a 3S 1300. Uh, I think I can fly it on a calm day with a 2S 1300 LiPo. But this one, I you know, I actually prefer the 3S. And the way I designed the build, the battery is right on the CG, so you can put pretty much any battery you want to, yeah, within reason. I haven't tried it with the 3S 2200 yet. Uh, a 2S 2200 might be uh, the order of the day for some nice, slow, stable flight. Anyway, though, this is what we've got. Um, what else can I tell you about it? It, it flies well. It's a floater. Uh, when you get off the throttle, it wants to fall. We've got a high angle of attack, as you can see. So we're pretty much just dragging this thing around by its sail. And you know, it flies real well. This is a great platform for a beginner flyer. Somebody's just getting into RC, and if you build it like I show you how to build it, with the right equipment, uh, there's no reason on a calm day that this could not form uh, or perform the function of a nice trainer to get you in the air for maybe your first RC experience. Uh, anyway, uh, pretty easy to build airplane. I, I knocked it out in about three hours, and then you know another hour or so putting electronics all together, if I calculate my entire time. But this is what we're going to be building. Um, what else can I tell you? We're, uh, well, we'll go through a, a list of the materials you're going to need here shortly. Uh, another cool thing, and I attribute this to Bob with Bob's Little Airplane Company, he came up with a really neat way of being able to take the sail off. And by taking the sail off, that means that it's a little more easy to transport in the back of your automobile or you know even the smallest of automobiles. So anyway, this is what we've got, and let's talk now about what materials we need to pull off this little build. Okay, like I mentioned, um, this is there's not a whole lot to building this airplane. There's not a whole lot of materials that go into it, but you are going to have to source them. And I'm going to give you a start here. Um, first off, you're going to we're going to start with the fuselage. You're going to need a piece of wood for the fuselage. Now I've been using three eighths square dowel, and I'm going to give you some options here. First off, I like to build as light as possible, so I started off with a piece of balsa. And this will work, but I would recommend that you get something a little stronger. Um, this will work, but because of the way we mount the motor to the airplane, you might want something a little stouter than balsa. So, anyway, you have a choice there of balsa, or in this case, I picked this up at my local Lowe's Home Improvement Store, and this is just a piece of pine as well. You, uh, you can use basswood, you can use oak, but it does need to be 3 8 square dowel. Okay. Additionally, we're going to need to get a little bit of a little bit of plywood, and this is just thin ply. This is this actually came from Sig. You might be able to see the little label on there. Uh, this is one sixteenth inch, uh, one sixteenth inch thick, and this is just some scrap that I've had for some other projects. But for for this material. Um, all you need is a small piece of it, a small sampling of it. I think you can actually get all the pieces that you need if you had a 6 inch by 12 inch piece. Uh, so, 16 inch ply, no less than 6 inch by 12 inch. Um, I know that the stores routinely sell, I, and I say the stores, your Hobby Lobby, your Michael's Craft Store, um, your local hobby shop. They're going to sell it in a 12 by 12 sheet. But anyway, get you some 1 16 inch ply. I, I may have said light ply before. This is not light ply. This is just a birch ply. Uh, but nonetheless, a piece of uh, preferably 12 inch square by 16 inch thick ply. Now we're going to need to get two planks of balsa. And of these two planks, they're going to be 3 inches wide by 36 inches long. And you want, I only have one here, but you're going to need two. You're going to need one that is 3 seconds inch thick and another that is 3 16 inch thick. So those, those two pieces of wood there. Um, we're going to need some tri-stock. This is just balsa quarter inch by quarter inch by 36 inch long 
tri-stock. And if you look, maybe we can get it where we can catch it the light. That is a triangular profile. That's what we call tri-stock. And we're going to use this to support the tail. We'll talk about that as we get into the build. And let's see here. Oh, we're going to need we're going to need a piece of this is actually three sixteenths. Um, I cut it out. I made three airplanes, well, four airplanes out of it. Um, finally, we're going to need what we're going to construct our our uh, sail framework out of. I picked this up at Hobby Lobby, the Chick Hobby Lobby, and this is simply bass strips. They're three sixteenths square dowels. I got five of them. You only need four. But I got five of them for three bucks, so I got them. Basswood is pretty strong. It's going to hold its shape well. And, well, that's what we want. We want four pieces of 3 16 square basswood. Okay? And then from those, you'll be able to use the templates that I'm going to supply you and cut out all the pieces that you need. You're going to need something for the sale. And there are different things that you can use. Uh, I've seen people use heavy-duty lawn and leaf garbage bags. That works, although for our application, the way I'm going to show you how to build this, it might be a little difficult. This is one ounce ripstop nylon, and my local fabric store, which was Joann Fabrics, um, they sold it in a 60-inch width, and they sell it by the yard. So I was able to get, I picked up a couple of yards of it, and I was able to get, uh, get this stuff for $7.99 a yard on sale. And this is the premium substance to use here, our premium substrate. Uh, I've been building a few of these, so I've got a couple of different colors here. I like a nice bright color. But you're going to need a piece that is um, uh, one yard by about 60 inches. And that's going to be your sail material. We've got uh, adhesives that we're going to use. And I'll talk about these as we go. But the main one here that you're going to need to put the... Uh, sail onto the framework, we're going to use goop. Now this was, uh, I think I paid $4.99 for this. This was a bigger, if you find a smaller size, this is a 3.7 ounce size. If you find a smaller size, that's going to be perfect because this is way too much and it was five bucks at my local Lowe's home improvement store. So we need some of that. Um, for some of our assembly, you can use just regular, regular old tight bond wood glue. Uh, great glue. I use this a lot in balsa and, and you know, different builds and stuff. Uh, I'm going to recommend that you get you some thin CA, cyanoacrylate, uh, cyanoacrylate glue. Um, I use Mercury Adhesives M5T, and you don't need a lot of this. This is a one ounce bottle. Uh, some of the hobby stores even have half ounce. Uh, this is a lot of glue. You won't need this much, so I'd say get the smallest you can, you can find. And then some medium CA. Uh, I'm using Mercury Adhesives M300M and some great medium viscosity uh, CA glue. You might want to get yourself some accelerator. If you don't like the quick set times, you want it to be even faster setting in your glue, get yourself some accelerator. Again, this is from Mercury Adhesives. Uh, I guess we could talk about some electronics now. I've got a couple of different options for the motors. Uh, we've got an ideal for most of my electronics. I like to deal right here in the United States. Down in Florida, I get a lot of my stuff, most all of my stuff, from HeadsUpRC.com. And that's where I got this motor, which flies actually very nice. This is the 800 kV Emax, and I like the anodized red too. This is probably your best value for, I think it's $11.50. You get the motor, you get a firewall mount, you get a stick mount, which is very important. We're using a stick mount on this project, so be sure you get a motor that's going to have the stick mount. Um, and you get the prop saver. So you get all of that for $11.50, and this is a great little motor. Uh, it already has the bullet connectors installed on the motor, so that's something you won't have to fool with. Uh, addition, and also I'm using Heads Up RC's 18-amp uh, speed controller. Uh, another great value. I'm using two 9-gram servos. You can see that we've got them mounted on here. These are just uh, the Heads Up RC's, their Power Up 9-gram servo. Those servos work really well. You may be able to see here that I've got some quick links on here. Uh, they sure do make it easier for installing your linkages. Um, anyway, we've got that. Uh, I'll give you a list of all this stuff later. Push rods. 
I am a big fan of Dubro, and you can buy Dubro uh, Quick Link. You get the, the 256 rod with the clevis on it, and you get a pack of them, and I buy these things all the time. But that's what I'm using for push rod material. So we've got servos, we've got this other motor option, and you may have one of these from another project lying around. This is also from Heads Up RC. Uh, they used to be made by Tower Pro, uh, BP Hobbies carries them, but it's a 2410-09 800 kV motor. Now this one's going to cost you a little more because you buy the motor and then additionally you have to buy the prop saver and uh, you know for that three millimeter uh, shaft and you got to buy the specific uh, stick mount for it and while this one works well also you just got to buy more stuff. It's going to end up costing you a little bit more in the end. Um, I also have, like I said, we're using an 18 amp speed controller. I also have a heads up RC 22 amp because I intended to put some of these electronics on another plane down the line, pull a little more amperage. Anyway, that's basically what we need for the electronics uh, 3S 1300. Of course, you're going to have to have a receiver, and I have used, uh, I'm a Spectrum guy, so you probably saw on there. Ooh, we got a little orange box receiver. These things are dirt cheap, and I have yet to have one fail. Um, as well, somewhere on here on my pegboard, I have have the uh, here we go. The little Spectrum AR400. This will work also. Brand new receiver there. I do buy name brand whenever I have it at my disposal when I can find them. Anyway, that's what we're going to build here. Little 37 inch wingspan aircraft, weighs 14, 15 ounces, going to fly really well on a 3S battery. Um, I've gone over adhesives, we've gone over the materials. Get yourself also a little spool of thread. You might want to raid mom or grandmother's uh, sewing box or if your wife if she sews and just get just some regular old thread. We're going to use that also. And um, there was one other thing. There's two different ways that you may want to hold this wing on. Um, I used Velcro Quick and Nasty, and that's I actually got that trick from Bob's Little Airplane Company. They used a couple spots of Velcro and a strap. Just as easily, on the next one I'm going to build, we're going to use just a simple quarter 20, get it down here where you can see it, quarter 20 nylon bolt with a nut. And that works out real well also. In fact, I've even got another one with a nylon wing nut. So that'll be pretty nifty. Anyway, I think that's all the materials that we need to go over. And uh, like I said, if you don't want to build one of these from scratch, I can understand, but you get the most satisfaction out of building it yourself. Uh, but if you want to buy the kit, head on over to blac.net. Head over to Bob's Little Airplane Company and get one from him. And that's my time. <laughs> All right, we'll join you, uh, join back with you in the next video, and we'll start this build.